Hello everyone and welcome to Geeks of Geeks. Today we are going to see the largest sum contiguous subarray problem. So before going on to the details of this problem, first of all let us let us discuss what do we mean by a subarray. So a subarray is basically an array within an array containing contiguous elements. So let's say we have given we are given this array, then a subarray could be minus one, it could be minus, it could be one, five, and minus three, or it could be all these elements. So, in all these elements is also a subarray of the given array. So, uh, the, the only condition is that it should have contiguous elements, which means that you cannot have a subarray with minus two and four. You need to have contiguous uh, elements. So in, if you want to have an subarray with these two elements, then you need to have minus three with them because that is where the condition of contiguous elements is met. Now coming to the uh, problem of largest sum contiguous subarray. So given this array, you have to actually find out uh, which is the uh, subarray of this given array, which has the largest sum and all the elements in the subarray should be contiguous. So, uh, for example, you have minus two and minus three and then four. So the sum of these three elements is actually minus one. So that is on the uh, negative side. But if we uh, say calculate the sum of five and minus three, then it's two. So two is greater than minus one. So in this way, you have to actually uh, give the uh, the solution basically would be the uh, maximum uh, sum which can be achieved by using uh, uh, by adding basically the contiguous elements of a subarray of this given array. So as you can see that uh, the largest sum contiguous subarray for this given array would be this which I have highlighted 4 minus 1 minus 2 1 and 5. So 4 minus 1 minus 2 becomes 1 and then 1 and 5 becomes uh, 6 so total 7. So the maximum sum that is the largest sum uh, of a contiguous subarray of this array is actually 7 and this is the array which is the 4 minus 1 minus 2 1 and 5. So this we have to now find out uh, programmatically. Now uh, for this, we'll actually actually be seeing the Cadence algorithm. So let's see how he solves this problem. So first of all, we initialize two variables, uh, which is uh, max so far and max ending here. We initialize these two variables with zero. Then what we do is we loop on each element of the array. Note that we are looping on each of the element only once. Now what we do is, once we get that element uh, that is uh, a of i, uh, then what we do is we uh, update the max ending here. So max ending here becomes max ending here plus a of i. So the element is actually added to the previous value of max ending here in the first step. Then in the second step, we check that if the max ending here has become negative. So if it is negative, that means it is less than zero, then we again initialize it to uh, zero. So we are basically resetting it to zero if it, it has become negative. Now in the third step, we compare the max so far with the max ending here. If max so far is smaller than max ending here, then we update the max so far uh, with the value of max ending here. So for every element in the array, we actually do these three steps. And finally, once we have done these three steps for all the elements in the array, uh, we return whatever the value max so far has at that point of time. So the uh, simple idea of Cadence algorithm is to look for all the positive contiguous segments of the array. So it's actually looking for uh, all the segments which have the uh, positive uh, sum. So max ending here is actually used for that. 
uh, and keep track of the maximum sum contiguous segments among all positive segments. So because we are using max so far and we are updating it at every step. So we'll actually be uh, finding out the maximum sum contiguous segments and out of all those segments, we actually uh, select the uh, segment whose sum is the maximum. So that is why the max so far variable is coming into the picture. Now each time we get a positive sum, compare it with max so far and update max so far if it is greater than max so far. So let us take an example to uh, actually understand this algorithm better. So we'll do a walkthrough and for each element we'll actually be uh, checking, uh, we'll actually be running all those three steps. So uh, first of all, we have initialized max so far and max ending here with zero. Then what we do is we start with the first element, which is element at index zero and that element is minus two. So when we are actually, uh, so we'll see the element. So max ending here becomes max ending here plus the element that is minus two. So max ending here was zero. Now zero minus two becomes minus two. So max ending here has actually become negative. So as per the algorithm, if the max ending here becomes negative, then we again reset it to zero. We set it to zero because max ending here is less than zero. Then we come to the element at index one, which is minus three. Again, max ending here is till, till now is zero and we again subtract three from it. So it again becomes negative. So again, we set it to zero because it is less than zero. Now coming to I equal to two. So the element is actually four. So we update the max ending here. So max ending here becomes zero plus four. That is four. So now this is positive element. So we compare the max so far and it is updated to four because max ending here is greater than max so far, which was zero till now. Now coming to the third element, uh, basically it in element at index three. So the element is minus one. So we update the max ending here. So max ending here was four till now. Now we, uh, we have uh, four minus one. So that is three. So max ending here becomes three. Now because max ending here is actually smaller than the max so far. So we do not update the max so far. Now coming to the index four. So the element is minus two. Then we again update the max ending here. So remember that the max value of max ending here was three. So we do a three minus two and max ending here becomes one. Again, max ending here is actually smaller than the max so far. So we do not do anything. We do not update the max so far. Now coming to the element at index five. So the element is one. So we uh, update the uh, max ending here as current max ending here plus one. So max ending here becomes two. Still max ending here is smaller than the max so far. So we do not update the max so far variable. Uh, now coming to the element at index six. So that element is five. Max ending here becomes uh, max ending here plus five, which is two plus five. So it becomes seven. Now max ending here is actually greater than max so far. So we update the max so far with seven. And uh, yeah, so the max so far now, right now has the value seven and max ending here is also having the value seven. Now coming to the index seven. So the element is minus three. So max ending here becomes seven minus three, which is four. So it is smaller than the max so far. So we do not update anything now. Uh, so we have traversed the whole of the array and we found out that the max the value of max so far is seven which is the uh, last updated value and thus this is the uh, maximum sum that can be achieved let's look at the code for it so uh, here you see the function max sub array sum so you take as an argument the array and its size then you initialize the max so far and max ending here with zero. Once you do that, you traverse uh, over the array and then you actually add the element value at 
index i to max ending here as per the algorithm and then if max ending here is smaller than 0 we reset it to 0 and if max ending here is smaller than uh, max so far is smaller than max ending here then we update the max so far as equal to the max ending here finally once we have uh, we have traversed the whole array we return the max so far Now uh, this program can be further optimized if we compare max so far with max ending here only if max ending here is greater than zero. So because the minimum value of max ending here is zero, so we only compare it uh, when max ending here is greater than zero. So in this uh, in the in that code snippet, what we have made just a minor change. We have added a else keyword here. So if the max ending here is uh, greater than zero only then will be coming to this condition otherwise will not be coming to this condition so this is a minor optimization to the previous uh, implementation now the thing is that this algorithm will not work for all negative numbers because if all the uh, numbers are negative it will not find any positive uh, segment basically and it will keep uh, keep the value of max ending here as zero and thus the max so far will also be zero so it will just return zero for all negative numbers so uh, now let's look at implementation which will actually work for all negative numbers as well so here we'll actually not be uh, resetting the value to zero if the uh, max so far becomes uh, negative so what we do is we first of all initialize the uh, max so far and current max with the first element once you have done that we start the loop from the second element that is from the index one and we keep on traversing the array and we update the current max variable so the uh, current max is basically the max ending here uh, variable so you update the current max as uh, array of i or uh, current max plus area of i so you you calculate the maximum of element at index i or that element added to the current max so whichever is greater is actually added to the current max so it could be the case that uh, both of these numbers are actually negative but whichever uh, is greater still that value will actually be passed on to the current max once you have done that uh, you update the max so far as in the previous uh, implementation so you calculate the maximum of max so far and current max whichever is greater that is assigned to the max so far once we have traversed all the arrays using this for loop we just return the max so far so simple enough uh, so the time complexity of this solution is order of n because we are traversing all the elements uh, only once so the time complexity is pretty good uh, given the fact that uh, as per the problem statement we have we are actually uh, comparing all the uh, sub arrays of a given array and the programming paradigm which we have used is uh, called dynamic programming wherein you uh, where we are basically uh, keep on adding steps to already solved problems so we uh, have we start from the uh, problem say of two elements and then we increase the size of the problem so then we consider the third element then the fourth then with fifth so we will build up like that so that is why the algorithm paradigm is dynamic uh, programming so that is all for this tutorial thank you very much